I have questions about the end of the story of Moses. So, okay, if there is a historical Moses, where is this guy? I mean, where, where was he buried? Uh, according to the biblical tradition, he ended on the other side of the valley. And he dies where? At Mount Nebo. Could the final resting place of Moses, a figure revered across centuries and faiths, finally be within our grasp? In a groundbreaking expedition, researchers have unearthed clues pointing towards what could be one of the most significant archaeological and religious discoveries of our time, Moses' tomb. Delving into the depths beneath the Sea of Galilee, a mysterious structure has emerged, challenging our understanding of ancient history and biblical narratives. With the legend of Miriam's well as a backdrop, this discovery captivates the imagination and invites us to reconsider the stories we thought we knew. But what could this mean for our understanding of history, faith, and the very landscape of the Middle East? Led by the charismatic and adventurous host, Josh Gates, the Expedition Unknown team sets out with a clear mission, to explore the depths of the Sea of Galilee in search of clues that might shed light on the biblical story of Miriam's well. Obviously, this isn't a magic rock that followed the Israelites through the desert, but, you know, is it possible that this is connected to the story of Exodus? According to tradition, this well-provided water was given to the Israelites during their 40 years in the desert, a miraculous source of sustenance directly linked to Miriam, the sister of Moses. The discovery of an underwater structure in the Sea of Galilee presents the possibility that this legend might have a basis in historical reality. Miriam, Moses, and Aaron's sister plays a crucial role in the Exodus narrative. She is first introduced to us as the watchful sister who ensures the safety of her baby brother Moses as he floats down the Nile in a basket. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Later, she emerges as a leader in her own right, leading the women of Israel in song and dance after crossing the Red Sea, celebrating their escape from Pharaoh's clutches. Miriam's association with water is a recurring theme in her story, from the Nile River's banks to the shores of the Red Sea, ending in the legend of Miriam's well. According to Jewish tradition, after the Israelites escaped Egypt, they were sustained in the desert by manna from heaven and water from a miraculous well that followed them on their journey. This well was not just any water source. God gave it in the merit of Miriam, a reward for her righteousness and her role in the salvation of Israel. The well is described as a rock that rolled along with the Israelites, springing forth water when needed to quench their thirst in the barren desert. Its waters were said to be sweet, a symbol of the spiritual and physical sustenance provided by God to his people. The significance of Miriam's well extends beyond its role as a water source. It represents God's ongoing provision and care for the Israelites throughout their desert wanderings. The well's presence among the people was a tangible sign of God's covenant, a reminder of his promise to guide and protect them until they reach the promised land. Furthermore, the well symbolizes faith's importance and righteous leadership's power. Just as Moses provided the law and Aaron offered mediation, Miriam's contribution through the well was equally important offering sustenance and support to the community. The events following her death further emphasize the connection between Miriam and the well. The Book of Numbers 20 verses 1 to 2 recounts that the Israelites found themselves without water immediately after Miriam's passing, suggesting that the miraculous well disappeared with her. This led to another significant event in the Exodus story, where Moses strikes a rock to bring forth water, an act of disobedience for which he was punished by God being forbidden to enter the Promised Land. The Sea of Galilee, a freshwater lake in Israel, is significant for its biblical connections and archaeological and geological importance. In recent years, an interesting discovery beneath its waters has captured the imagination of historians, archaeologists, and biblical scholars alike. Is it possible that this is connected to the story of Exodus? Well, in general, religions are known for incorporating uh, unique landscape features into their own uh, oral tradition. This discovery, known as the Sea of Galilee Anomaly, has sparked debates and speculation about its origins and significance, particularly its potential connection to the biblical narrative of Miriam's Well. The anomaly was first identified during a sonar survey by Israeli scientists in 2003. 
As they mapped the lake's bottom, they came upon a massive cone-shaped structure of basalt rocks and boulders. This structure, located half a mile northwest of the Sea of Galilee's shores, immediately stood out due to its size and composition. Measuring over 230 feet in diameter and rising approximately 39 feet from the lake bed, the structure's estimated weight is over 60,000 tons, suggesting a significant concerted effort in its construction. The connection to Miriam's well comes from the structure's mysterious origins and location in a region steeped in biblical history. According to Jewish tradition, the water well provided to the Israelites during their 40-year journey in the desert is associated with Miriam, the sister of Moses. While the Bible does not specify the well's fate after the Israelites reached the Promised Land, some traditions suggest it disappeared or was hidden, leading to speculation that the Sea of Galilee anomaly could be its final resting place or a related structure. To investigate the anomaly further, researchers used seismic air guns, a technology commonly used in oil and gas exploration and geological and archaeological studies. Seismic air guns release high-pressure air into the water, creating sound waves that penetrate the seabed. When reflected back to the surface, these waves are captured by sensors, allowing scientists to create detailed images of subsurface structures. You can look at a three-dimensional image and of the structure. Look at the size of it, it's huge. Yeah. It has to be uh, artificial. So somebody had to bring these uh, huge boulders of basalt and right. put them one on top of the other. It never happens naturally. In the case of the Sea of Galilee, Anomaly, using seismic air guns was crucial in generating a 3D image of the structure. This imaging revealed the complexity and precision of its construction, indicating that it was not a natural formation, but rather an artificial structure. The layers of basalt boulders were carefully placed, suggesting that the structure was built with a specific purpose in mind. The 3D imaging also allowed researchers to estimate the age of the structure, with some suggesting it could date back to the early Bronze Age, around 4,000 to 5,000 years ago. The use of seismic air guns in this context showcases the intersection of modern technology with ancient mysteries. By generating detailed images of the anomaly, researchers can examine its construction, estimate its age, and speculate about its purpose and the people who built it. This technology has opened new avenues for understanding the prehistoric and historic landscapes submerged beneath the Sea of Galilee, offering insights into the region's past that were previously inaccessible. Despite the advanced technology and the interesting findings, the exact purpose and origin of the Sea of Galilee anomaly still needs to be determined. Some scholars suggest it could have been a monumental structure, perhaps a burial mound or a ceremonial site. So the million dollar question, what the hell is this thing? Indeed, it reminds me of a cairn, or um, in the other words, an artificial um, stone mound covering a tomb underneath. In contrast, others speculate on its potential religious significance possibly connected to ancient rituals or practices. While speculative, the hypothesis linking it to Miriam's well adds a fascinating layer to its mystery, bridging the gap between archaeological discovery and biblical tradition. The structure discovered by the Expedition Unknown team is massive and mysterious. The structure, composed of basalt boulders and stones, forms a gigantic cone-shaped pile on the lake bed. Its sheer size and the deliberate arrangement of its components suggest a significant effort was invested in its construction. Using basalt, a volcanic rock common to the region, indicates that the builders sourced local materials. Yet, the purpose and the people behind this monumental undertaking remain mysterious. Initial estimates of the structure's age, based on the sediment layers covering it, and comparisons with similar archaeological sites in the region suggest it was constructed in the early to mid-Bronze Age. This period was characterized by the emergence of complex societies, advances in metalworking, and the establishment of trade networks across the ancient Near East. The construction of such a massive structure implies a well-organized community with the resources and social structure necessary to undertake large-scale projects. The significance of the discovery extends beyond its architectural and engineering aspects. It provides tangible evidence of the sophisticated societies that inhabited the region around the Sea of Galilee thousands of years ago. These communities were capable of monumental architecture, which likely served religious, ceremonial, or social purposes. The structure's placement in the lake 
now submerged due to changes in water levels over millennia, suggests it may have had a specific significance linked to water worship or as a marker in the landscape. The Exodus story, one of the foundational narratives of the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions, tells of the Israelites' escape from slavery in Egypt and their subsequent wanderings in the desert under the leadership of Moses. While traditionally dated to the late Bronze Age, the story's historical accuracy and timing have been subjects of debate among scholars. The discovery of the Sea of Galilee structure offers a new piece of the puzzle in understanding the region's history during the Bronze Age and its potential connection to the biblical narrative. See how something like this could become the Well of Miriam, something dry that then is consumed by water. It is definitely a possibility. If the structure predates the traditional dating of the Exodus, it could provide insights into the cultural and religious practices of the region's inhabitants before the emergence of Israelite society. It suggests that the area played a significant role in the region's broader religious and cultural landscape, potentially influencing the stories and traditions that would later be compiled into biblical texts. Conversely, if further research and dating place the structure closer to the traditional timeline of the Exodus, it could offer fascinating evidence of the kinds of monumental projects that were feasible at the time. This could lend credibility to the idea that the narratives of large-scale constructions and engineering feats described in the Bible, such as the building of altars and the erection of standing stones, have a basis in the technological capabilities of the time. The quest for Moses' tomb, symbolizing the intersection of faith, history, and archaeology, has fascinated people for centuries. Moses, a towering figure in the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, played a crucial role in these traditions' religious and cultural narratives. His life story, from his miraculous survival as a baby in the Nile to leading the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage and receiving the Ten Commandments from God, is foundational. Yet, despite his significance, the location of his final resting place remains one of the great mysteries of religious history. The biblical account of Moses' death is found in the book of Deuteronomy 34 verses 1 to 6, where it is stated that Moses died in the land of Moab and was buried in a valley opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Over at Mount Nebo, archaeologically, do we have evidence for this burial? No hard evidence. Okay. Moses is mentioned a lot in the Quran. Yeah, right? you have more than 130 times his name is mentioned in the Quran more than any other prophet. According to this tradition, Moses did cross the river and he ended in this side, like where we are standing. This narrative emphasizes the solitary nature of Moses' death and burial, orchestrated by God himself, and has led to a tradition of mystery surrounding the exact location of his tomb. The biblical account suggests that the burial site was deliberately kept secret to prevent it from becoming a site of idolatry or undue veneration. Islamic tradition also holds Moses Musa in high regard, recognizing him as a prophet and a messenger of God. The Quran recounts the story of Moses with significant parallels to the biblical narrative, emphasizing his mission to lead the Israelites and his role as a recipient of divine revelation. However, Islamic tradition offers a different perspective on his final resting place. Some Islamic texts suggest that Moses' tomb is near the red dunes of Rum in Jordan, while others believe it is near Jericho in the West Bank. A notable Islamic site associated with Moses is the tomb of Nabi Musa, situated in the West Bank, which Muslims have revered for centuries as the burial place of Moses. This site, featuring a mosque and a mausoleum, has become a focal point of pilgrimage and reverence, reflecting the deep respect and affection for Moses within Islamic tradition. The annual Nabi Musa pilgrimage, a tradition that dates back hundreds of years, underscores the significance of Moses in the collective Muslim consciousness and the spiritual landscape of the region. The search for Moses' tomb is a journey that goes beyond mere physical exploration. It is a quest that touches upon the profound depths of faith, history, and spiritual longing. Archaeologists and scholars from various disciplines have proposed theories and conducted explorations. Yet the tomb's elusive nature remains, much like the biblical and Quranic narratives that cloak it in mystery and reverence. So, do we know who's inside this? This was Moses' tomb. It's relying on uh, Muslim traditions, and they pointed 
on this place. And right. since this 13th century point, it became a whole compound. This quest highlights the challenges of reconciling historical and archaeological inquiry with sacred traditions. While the desire to locate Moses' tomb is driven by a deep-seated human yearning for connection with the divine and the historical, it is tempered by the recognition of the tomb's symbolic significance that goes beyond its physical reality. The search is not merely for a burial site, but a deeper understanding and appreciation of Moses' legacy and enduring impact on religious thought and moral philosophy. Nabi Musa, an ancient and revered site situated in the stark rolling hills of the Judean desert, stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of one of the most significant figures in Abrahamic religions, Moses or Musa, as he is known in Islam. This sacred mystery located some 30 kilometers east of Jerusalem and not far from the Dead Sea has captivated the hearts and minds of the faithful for centuries, serving as a focal point of religious devotion, pilgrimage, and cultural heritage. This is one of the great challenges, is how to look at the stories of the Bible, the stories of the Quran, and places like this, and find that intersection between faith and history and archaeology. Because we don't really know what's here. Yeah. But spiritually, it's a place that's true for so many people. Despite the absence of explicit textual evidence in Islamic scripture, the belief that Nabi Musa houses the tomb of Moses underscores the profound spiritual and historical significance attributed to this site. The tradition of Nabi Musa dates back to the medieval period, with the existing shrine and mosque complex believed to have been established in the early 13th century under the rule of the Mamluk Sultan, Baybars. The site has undergone numerous renovations and expansions over the centuries, reflecting its importance in the Islamic world. It is the destination of an annual pilgrimage that coincides with the Muslim holiday of Laylat al-Miraj, celebrating the Prophet Muhammad's night journey and ascension to heaven. This pilgrimage, a tradition observed for hundreds of years, underscores the deep spiritual resonance of Nabi Musa, not only as a memorial to Moses, but also as a site of communal and religious identity. The belief in Nabi Musa as the resting place of Moses, while not directly mentioned in the Quran, is rooted in Islamic tradition and the teachings of various scholars and historians. According to some accounts, the site was identified based on a vision or a dream in which the location of Moses' tomb was revealed. While lacking archaeological evidence, this narrative has suffused Nabi Musa with a sacred aura, making it a site of veneration and pilgrimage. The quest to understand the historical and archaeological realities of Nabi Musa is full of challenges and sensitivities. The site's religious significance and the reverence with which the Muslim community holds it necessitate a cautious approach to archaeological inquiry. Unlike other historical sites where excavation and research are pursued with scientific rigor, Nabi Musa's exploration is tempered by the need to respect religious beliefs and practices. Has this ever been opened, examined? It's religion. You don't mix religion with science and excavations, especially in the Holy Land. Archaeologists and historians are keenly aware of the delicate balance between uncovering the past and honoring the spiritual significance of sacred sites. At Nabi Musa, any archaeological investigation must be conducted with the utmost sensitivity and respect for the site's religious and cultural heritage. The potential for archaeological research to alter or challenge traditional beliefs about Moses' tomb adds a layer of complexity to such endeavors, requiring a collaborative approach that engages religious authorities and the local community in the research process. Mount Nebo's significance is primarily derived from its mention in the Bible as the final resting place of Moses. Deuteronomy 34 verses 1 to 6 narrates Moses' ascent to the peak of Nebo at God's command, to gaze upon the land of Canaan. After viewing the promised land, Moses dies on the mountain, and according to scripture, God himself buries him in Moab, but no man knoweth of his tomb unto this day. This narrative imbues Mount Nebo with a profound spiritual significance, marking it as a site of pilgrimage, reflection, and reverence for believers. Over the centuries, Mount Nebo has attracted pilgrims from across the Christian and Jewish worlds, drawn by its biblical associations and the desire to stand where Moses once stood. The site's religious importance is further highlighted by the presence of early Christian mosaics, a monastery, and a church, 
which attest to the long-standing awe of this place. These artifacts, some dating back to the 4th century AD, offer a glimpse into the early Christian community's efforts to commemorate Moses' life and legacy. The Franciscan Order, which has maintained the site since the early 20th century, has conducted extensive excavations, uncovering significant archaeological finds that provide insight into the site's Christian past. The mosaics, particularly with their complex designs and religious motifs, are among the most valuable in the Middle East, illustrating the blend of art, faith, and history that characterizes Mount Nebo. Unlike Nabi Musa, where religious sensitivities limit archaeological exploration, square that off because we're never going to be able to open this. We don't need to open that. For us, you have to accept it. Even for archaeologists, some things have to be left to faith. You can't turn over every stone. You have to accept some traditions, some beliefs. Mount Nebo has been the subject of more extensive archaeological scrutiny. However, the search for concrete evidence of Moses' burial remains elusive, as the biblical account itself suggests that the location of his grave was meant to stay unknown. The lack of direct archaeological evidence linking Moses to Mount Nebo does not lessen its significance. Instead, it underscores the site's role as a symbol of faith and a testament to the enduring power of biblical narratives. The historical and religious significance of Mount Nebo is further reinforced by its inclusion in religious texts and its recognition by religious authorities. The site's panoramic view of the Holy Land, including the Jordan River Valley, the Dead Sea, Jericho, and on clear days Jerusalem, offers a tangible connection to the biblical story, allowing visitors to imagine Moses' experience as described in Deuteronomy. The contrast between Mount Nebo and Nabi Musa highlights the rich intertwining of religious traditions and the diverse perspectives within the Abrahamic faiths regarding sacred sites. While Mount Nebo is deeply embedded in Christian and Jewish heritage, Nabi Musa is a significant site within Islamic tradition. Both sites, however, share a common thread, the adoration of Moses, a figure of immense importance across these religious traditions. Mount Nebo's appeal lies in its biblical associations and its role as a bridge between past and present, offering a space for reflection on the profound themes of faith, leadership, and the promise of redemption. It serves as a reminder of the journey of the Israelites and the legacy of Moses, whose life and teachings continue to inspire millions worldwide.